Now at 10, the story of a girl who survived the Joplin tornado as she gets ready to undertake the next chapter in her life as an adult. Plus, the Downtown Joplin Alliance hosts an event to help create more productive volunteers. And we're asking Oklahoma shoppers about their reactions to the grocery tax cut. I'm Amber Jenkins with the story. The four states most watched news starts now. Jasper County is among the most vulnerable in a study that highlights the risk of destruction from a tornado. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Dow Quick. A study ranks the county 48th among 950 counties for risk of damage or loss of life. KOIM's Fernandez Silva has more. We, we still remember the sounds and like the train sound that everyone talks about. That was very real during the tornado. It was a very high pitched screeching sound during the tornado. So when everything went quiet, and all the electricity was out and the TV went off and we couldn't hear the radio, we heard some screeching sounds. Elizabeth Smith's family, it's one of many who lost their homes on May 22nd, 2011. Even though she was just a kid, the experience changed her forever in many ways. I think that we look at things differently. Looking at things differently even made Smith choose her profession. It makes me more wanting to get out there more and tell people more about how they need to protect their homes and their autos and their business because of the impact that a tornado or any kind of weather damage can do to them. Especially in an area with high tornado risk, according to a recent study. The 2024 Most Vulnerable Counties for Tornado Damage Study was conducted by Roof Genome, an online site covering the roofing and solar panel industry. Nine Missouri and seven Kansas counties finished among the 100 most vulnerable counties for tornado damage. Jasper County is the only one, according to the research, that is in the top 100 in the four states area. The study compared counties with a relatively moderate to very very high tornado risk, according to the Federal Emergency Management Agency. More specifically, they looked at tornado risk and expected annual loss from tornadoes. While dealing with losing her home in the past and hoping to never leave something similar in the future, Smith is cautious. We have a basement, we have shelter, and we have good insurance, so we just know that we have all the things that we need to take shelter and protect ourselves. In Joplin, Fernanda Silva, KOAM News. Now to learn where the other counties in the four states are ranked in the 2024's Most Vulnerable Counties for Tornado Damage list, go to our website, koamnewsnow.com. Certainly nothing severe in our immediate future. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty. No, not at all. It's just kind of cold outside. In fact, uh, over a 60 degree drop for us last night, which was crazy. We dropped from 83 to 21 in uh, about 10 hours, which is kind of crazy. 41 was our high average high is 54 degrees temps. Now upper 20s to near 30 degrees will hang out mid 20s for us tonight. At least the winds are calming down, so we don't have that real low wind chill that we had late last night into the morning hours. We do have some clouds kind of sneaking in. Not a huge deal, but we are tracking our next wave. It's out uh, really just west of the El Paso and that will start to affect us as we get into tomorrow night. Tonight's pretty quiet, just cold. We'll bottom out at about 28 degrees back to 43 by 10 a.m. We'll look at that next storm system coming up here in just a bit. See you soon. Oklahoma Governor Kevin Sitt signed a bill that will eliminate the state's portion of the grocery tax. The state's tax rate will decrease from 4.5 percent to zero. The new tax cut will affect food that's taken home and prepared food. However, on-site meals will not qualify. This comes after a five-year bipartisan effort to make groceries more affordable. It just depends on how they're going to try to get more money out of me some other way. That's kind of what I'm thinking. One um, way or another, they're going to get it. So I'm kind of, I kind of got to read more about it. I think this is a good decision because people who aren't on fixed incomes don't watch their pennies as closely as those of us who do. <laughs> right. That cut's going to be effective in late August, 90 days after the session ends. Volunteering can be a great way to support your community, and the Downtown Joplin Alliance is trying to make it easier than ever to decide how you want to help. The group today hosted its Volunteer Expo. 
Residents were able to learn about the different activities the Alliant hosts to benefit the area. That includes cleaning teams, helping with endangered properties, organizing events like Third Thursday, and much more. I feel like Joplin's kind of that perfect size right now where um, individuals who volunteer, who get involved, um, can have a real uh, tangible impact and outcome on their community. So, so anyone who, who likes to see the, uh, the results of the work they put in, uh, this organization's a, a great way to, to do that. Current volunteers were encouraged to bring a friend to the expo to show them all the ways they can be involved. Westside Elementary kicks off its Feet First for Westside Fund today. That campaign provides a lot of students who might not have a new pair of shoes with a brand new pair. Organizers got just as excited about the fundraiser as the kids. We love when donors approach us with these ideas and we can make them happen. What a great benefit for the kids and the students at Westside Elementary School that everybody should have a quality pair of shoes. So we can't thank the donor enough. We can't thank Kelsey and Westside School for uh, working with us on this. And again, that's the goal is that every student there who needs a pair of shoes is going to have that available. The fund administered through the Community Foundation of Southeast Kansas hopes to ensure that every student can jump feet first into learning with a new pair of shoes. Missouri Southern today opened the doors on the 10th annual Dress to Impress event. That event features donations of gently used men's and women's professional clothing for students to start or expand their professional wardrobe. The event's in preparation for the upcoming spring career fair and for many students, the beginning of their careers. I'm an elementary education major, so what I'm doing is building a wardrobe up for teaching. Um, someone could be building a wardrobe up because they're a business major and they need clothing for everyday wear to work. Um, and so you have to start early because you can obviously do it in a short amount of time especially as a college student your funds are maybe not as grand as it would be if you were working like full time somewhere so this is volunteers also help students with mentoring and coaching later in sports high school hoops hit the hardwood tonight john's gonna have highlights from some area playoff action in just a few minutes but first the kansas forest service has advice for how you can prevent fires from spreading because U.S. Cellular has an incredible... Four states have seen how high winds can turn into high fire risk. But the Kansas Forest Service points out that anything that makes a spark can start a fire. Rock Wilson has that story. Kansas Forest Service Fire Training Specialist Rodney Redinger says anything that creates a spark could start a wildfire. Trailer bearings, chains dragging along the highway, um, cutting torches, welding. And even things you may not think about. Four wheelers or, or UTVs or something out in, in tall grass at the hot exhaust. Um, you know, those on days like today, those can can cause big problems in a short amount of time. A few small grass fires have started in Reno County, but they were contained and put out quickly, thanks to the preparedness of firefighters. All of our trucks are ready to go. Um, all the training has been done. All our mitigation processes have been done. Today, we're just uh, gearing up for uh, going into action. Hutchinson Fire Department Chief of Operations Jeremy Unruh says they're also ready with fire equipment they don't normally use. We have a playing a uh, preposition at our airport. Uh, we have task force available from Cedric County. But if a wildfire does break out, what should you do? If there's fire trucks or, or emergency crews in the area, really avoid the area. And don't drive into smoke. We don't want firefighters on the side of a road trying to do a fire fighting operation. And, and get hit by a car, right? And we don't vice versa. Rodney also says if a wildfire is nearing your home, there's nothing worth risking your life over to get through it. Everything there can be replaced, hopefully. You know, that, and I know that there are some things that maybe are invaluable to people, pictures and, and things like that, but it's not worth the risk to, to your safety. Hey, and don't let the cold temperatures fool you. The right dry conditions can still lead to a fire. Students in Kansas School District USD 246, that's ARMA, they can expect their school weeks to get a little bit shorter. The school board voted earlier this month to have students go from a five-day schedule down to only four days each week. The district superintendent, Dr. Ray Streeter, says the decision came after a lengthy process of research and weighing the pros and cons. 
He says he believes this is the best step to keep teachers and students more engaged and energized during the school year. So our kids are going to get more daily instruction on math, reading, social studies, etc. So that's already been done for us. Our schedule's built. Um, professional development with the admin team has kind of been figured out already. So right now, um, it's just a process of, of wait and, and there's excitement because I think it's going to be a really good thing for our district. One group this decision affects bus drivers. Dr. Streeter says most bus drivers also work as custodians and that there will still be opportunity for those drivers to obtain hours during the school's off days. Young entrepreneurs from all across Southeast Kansas took part in a business competition today in Pittsburgh. The Youth Initiative event hosted by the Economic Development and Community Engagement Division of Pitt State focused on such areas as business presentation and a trade show competition. The event organizers say it provides competitors with business skills and those, that's something that can be very useful in their very near future. Um, so we are in a fax class, which is Family and Consumer Sciences, and our teacher assigned us this project as to find a way to impact families and make life easier for them. It's for them to have a little bit more confidence in themselves um, and understanding that even at this young age of high school, that you can still go out and make a difference in your community. Members of the public had the opportunity to drop by that event and judge at the trade show. A little bit later, Wednesday night isn't just for high school basketball. John's going to have details on two area colleges playing some big games tonight. That's coming up in sports. Plus, it's going to be another cold night, but we are going to start to warm up, but also a little rain-snow mix. We're going to look at that coming up. Crystal Funeral. Well, of course, much colder day outside for us today, but February in general, we're almost done with it. Got another day, that leap year uh, in general has been fairly warm. Check this out, 22 out of 28 days have been above average. All the red days, but today a blue one. We only made it up to 41 degrees, about 10 degrees below where we should be. But look at this drop. Our official high was 83. We dropped down. Our official low of 21 degrees, that is 62 degree drop that we saw in about a 10 hour stretch last night, which is kind of crazy. Nice shot, this is Indigo Sky Casino and Resort, of course, Indigo, and just outside of Seneca, Missouri. Looks pretty good. It is cold, upper 20s to lower 30s. We'll drop back mid 20s later on tonight. Let's go outside, it's 30, 7th and range line, south winds are light. Dew point, as our humidity comes up a little bit, is coming up, uh, should cap off our overnight lows 24 to 25. At least the winds have died down. They're going to start to pick back up once again for us tomorrow afternoon. And with the humidity dropping tomorrow afternoon, 15 to 20 percent, you probably a little bit of a fire danger, so you don't want to burn. But the humidity will rise tomorrow night as we get a wave of energy that is going to push through the region. We do have the clouds increasing, lifting off toward the north and to the east. Partly cloudy skies for us tonight. Nothing underneath the clouds, but we are watching two waves. One just to the west of El Paso. A second one, which will affect us by the second half of the weekend. This first one, it's weak, but it's going to rotate right toward us as we go through about the next 24 hours. Let's watch it. Moves right on top of us. Weak wave tomorrow night. Passes by. Great weather heading into the weekend. And then we'll start to watch the beginnings of our next storm system, which will roll out early next week. All right, let's go through time tonight. Again, mid-20s, overnight lows, not bad across the region. As we go through the daytime hours for us tomorrow, we're going to go mid-40s by noon. Now, once we get into the afternoon, we get up to 54, 55 degrees, so it looks pretty good. Few little showers start to increase tomorrow evening. Here's 7 p.m. Light showers push through. I want you to notice a little bit of pink. That is some sleet and snow, which is going to try to mix in. Should not be a big deal. Temperatures will be above freezing. Showers start to press out of here just in time for Friday morning. And then Friday afternoon, it looks pretty good. We get sunshine returning. High temps right around 60 degrees. Day planner for you Thursday, 29 at 7, 49 by noon. High temp, 54. 
Let's go into your week and take a look because it's going to be another great one. Look at this mid 70s, sunny Saturday, upper 70s on Sunday. The winds are really going to pick up on Sunday. Uh, so Saturday is probably going to be the better of the two days. 54 tomorrow, 60 on Friday, 76 Saturday, 78 on Sunday. Chances for thunderstorms moving in on Monday. It's good weather to get outside, do some yard work, do some fishing. Yeah, it looks so. good. Thanks, Doug. Still ahead, Missouri Southern and Pitt State basketball play their second to last home games of the year. John Dales has highlights from those games and more. It's up next. Morning, Scotty. Pittsburgh State and Missouri Southern basketball just a week away from the 2024 MIAA tournament and the Lions and Gorillas play their penultimate home games of the season tonight. We start with Pitt State women's basketball. The Gorillas beat Emporia State 72-56. Jenna Shipley leads the way, scoring a career high 21 points on 9 of 11 shooting. Gorillas back at it senior day on Saturday against 19th ranked Missouri Western. Pitt State men's basketball at home against Emporia State, hoping to stay tied for third in the MIAA. Early in the first half, Jeremy Shaw glides to the basket. He scores the right-handed layup. He'd finish the night with 16 points. A little bit later, RJ Forney finds Marquis English on a pick and pop three. That's good. Gorillas lead by five. But Emporia State beat PSU in the first matchup, wouldn't go away all night. Kale McGee attacks the right alley, scores off the glass to cut the lead to two. Next possession, McGee again, this time ties the game. Late in the first half though, Max Alexander on the inbound finds Tanner Manns, open from the near corner, drills the three, stretches the lead back to six. This one will be close the whole game, but the Gorillas pull it out at home. They win 79-76, their third victory in a row. Missouri Southern, women's basketball at home. Lions hosting Washburn. Early in the first quarter, Ryan Franklin working down low, jumper up and good. Southern leads by three. A few possessions later, really nice pass. Mira Khan to Ryan Franklin for the easy two. She scores 18 tonight for the Lions. Second quarter, Chrislyn Jones finds herself all alone in transition and knocks down the three-point shot. Closing seconds of the first half, Washburn tries to beat the buzzer, but Caitlin Honeycutt gets the huge rejection. Southern up by 13 at the break. Opening play of the second half, Honeycutt now shows off her offensive skills. Drains the three, Southern leads by 16. Then later in the second half, called her name earlier. Gonna see her again, Chrislyn Jones continues to get open. She buries another three. She leads the Lions with 19 tonight. Southern bounces back after a loss. Lions get their 20th win of the season, 66-51. Missouri Southern men's basketball at home tonight as well, also facing Washburn. Early on in the contest, Darius Dawson gets a real tough two to fall on the inside, gives the Lions the early lead. Washburn not afraid though to shoot the ball all night. Sam Ungashik. Buries a three-pointer. Ichabod's up by six. Southern kept up with them all night, though. Vincent Sigmund Jr. open in the corner. He puts down three points. Lions staying within striking distance. A few possessions later, Darius Dawson shows off his range, and he buries the three. Dawson has 12 points for the Lions, but Washburn just has plenty of answers in this one. Michael Keegan hits a three from beyond the arc. Southern keeps it close, but Washburn Wins it, 77-72. Now over to Missouri, girls high school basketball, seventh seed of Webb City. Girls hoops in the quarterfinals of the district tournament against two seed West Plains. First quarter, Zizzers start fast. Zoe Scharnhorst gets it and nails a three. Up by seven at that point. Addie Burns looks to tighten it. She goes from the top of the key off the glass and in. Cards down one, but the Zizzers stay aggressive. Scharnhorst again, same spot, same result. Another three points. West Plains leads by six and a half. Gets ugly after that. Zoe Shrub now gets involved. She knocks down a three for West Plains. Cards down 14. Kira Long then bounces to Addie Burns. She gets the bucket and the foul, but it won't be enough for the Lady Cardinals. Webb City season comes to an end in the district quarterfinals, 57 to 34. 
Now another game in that same district tournament tied between McDonald County and Carl Junction. Last seconds, Lady Bulldogs get the last possession and Jaden Howard beats the buzzer to give CJ the win. The Lady Bulldogs survive in advance. They'll play in the semifinals Friday night at six. It's especially good for that Carl Junction team. They lost on their senior night at home, or they lost in their homecoming game on a buzzer beater against Ozark. They get the buzzer beater this time to keep their season alive. Yeah, it all kind of balances out, I guess. We'll be right back. We return to. Merriam Webster Dictionary tried to end an age old question, affirming once and for all it's okay to end a sentence with a, prop, a preposition. It's fine. As Merriam Webster explained, the debate began with writers who tried to align English with Latin, a romance language, a dead language at that. But as the dictionary pointed out, English is not a romance language, so ending a sentence with the word with is perfectly fine, or with any other preposition for that matter, though something tells me this battle will rage on. Trying to avoid a preposition at the end of a sentence can make the sentence just seem awkward. Yeah. Even if it's something up with which you will not put. So, end it with a preposition if you want. My grammar's <laughs> so I don't even know really but what you know, you're talking you know, about. But you know your serious <laughs> clouds and your cumulonimbus clouds and there's a lot. There's many more of them. Oh, I know there are. Yeah. And we are going to have a lot of mid and upper level clouds for us tomorrow. Alto Stratus, 54, 60 on Friday, a few showers tomorrow night. Final sports note. Pittsburgh girls basketball gets a big upset in the sub-state semifinals. They'll play for a championship on Saturday. Very good. Don't forget the morning show starts at 5 a.m. Let's make it a great tomorrow.